you. That's very nice of you. Come on, sit down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice of you. That is very nice of you. Look, I, under I understand how you feel. You've been waiting so long, you would applaud the replaying of the Rodney King tape again. <laughs> Simmer down. Wow, we're winding up. After the show, folks, as you go out, they're going to give each one of you a pooper scooper. We're going to my park and clean it up. <laughs> uh, anyway, you sound good tonight. We had kind of a strange group last night. The audience has been real good. Yeah. But, you know, rough group, I guess. You know you're in trouble when you walk out and you see a guy in the front row wearing a T-shirt that said, personally arrested by Chief Daryl Gates. <laughs> Isn't this about the time of the year? I saw a bunch of kids the other night going out looking like a rented limousine going to a high school prom. You remember your high school prom? I sure do. Who did you take to the high school prom? Madeline Mason. Madeline? You remember? Yeah. Got to her before you did. <laughs> now, now you're getting to her daughters. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, hearkening back today. I get in a nostalgic mood, and I was doing a lot of hearkening lately. <laughs> back, back, uh, how hearkening? Never mind that. <laughs> back to my youth on the plains of Nebraska, and I learned very early in life, life is not always what it seems to be. Prom night. Went to pick up my date, Gina Statutory. <laughs> Then the corsage on her, her chest deflated. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, well, Gina, I remember I told you the other girl about Becky that I used to go with? Yeah, tell us about That her. was later. That was it. Yeah, well, I don't know whatever happened to her. Yeah. But uh, she was voted at Miss Lincoln when she went to high school. <laughs> Why because, is that? Because every, guy, because every guy in the balcony took a shot at her. <laughs> <laughs> That joke came out of the memory file somewhere way back in there. Well, there's been a lot of hoopla about us uh, going off the air next week, and I pick up the paper today. We're not the only ones leaving. Um, commentator John Chancellor, or Chancellor, I guess it is, from NBC News, said he was retiring today. Now, General Electric, the company with a heart, <laughs> is going to milk that for ratings, too. They announced in the final episode, Chancellor is going to marry Irving R. Levine. <laughs> Have you noticed that seems to be the trend this season in TV? There are marriages on a lot of last shows. For example, I think on Cheers, is that tonight or was tonight? I think Woody Harrelson gets married. Uh, they had a wedding of B. Arthur, got married on Golden Girls. Isn't there a wedding on Different World coming up, something like that? I have not seen so much rice hurled on television <laughs> since George Bush got sick in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> little, item in the, little item in the newspaper today, I think in USA Today, you may have had this problem. It says that people who have extremely high voices are having trouble leaving messages on phone machines. Do you know why? Apparently, the high voice triggers it and, and stops the machine from recording the message. Absolutely true. Now, that explains. I didn't know why. Why have we haven't got any goodbye wishes from Tiny Tim. <laughs> Okay, okay. Hey, you get a, you get a biggie, you throw another one in. <laughs> throw a clunker in just to balance it out. Did you watch those pictures yesterday from outer space? Was that sensational? The three astronauts up there, what, 250 miles, pulling in a 70 or $95 billion or million dollar satellite, putting it in the Endeavor? Oh, you know what I don't understand? The pictures are so clear. I turn on cable. I can't get ESPN from Malibu. <laughs> These things come in beautifully. It cost $93 million to rescue the satellite. Would have been free, but the GE warranty expired the day before. <laughs> yeah. 
They were trying to, uh, to tie it on to what they call a capture bar. It was kind of like a T-shaped thing, cost $7 million, and the capture bar did not work for $7 million. bucks. you know, for 20 bucks, they could have used the Ronco Garden Weasel? <laughs> Well, what else is happening? Politically, it's kind of quiet right now. The candidates are miles apart on the environment. Bush is going to attend, finally is going to attend the Earth Summit in where? Rio de Janeiro? Uh, Clinton is criticizing Bush for not doing more. Pat Buchanan is criticizing Bush for signing the Clean Air Act. And Jerry Brown just declared himself a protected owl. Ross Perot announced today that he was picking Jay Rockefeller, not as his running mate, his chauffeur. He's rich. <laughs> I got a bell with that one. A little, a little sad news. It was in the paper. I have to report the good news with the bad, folks. Carlos Herrera, the inventor of the margarita, died yesterday. Oh. What's your you can't miss his, his plot at Forest Lawn. It's the one with the salt around the grave. <laughs> I know, I know. People will say that's bad taste, but Carlos would have loved that joke. <laughs> that was all the first thing they said in the paper, right? Inventor of margarita dies. Wouldn't you like to go that way? Sure. You've probably got your flag home at half mast, Tommy. <laughs> okay, tonight, Mr. Michael Keaton is with us. Yeah. Yeah. He's not uh, very, very funny Martin Short is here. And, and Miss Terry Garr. So, Keaton is with us, Martin Schulte, and uh, Martin Schulte. <laughs> well, I did that with Boob Newhart the other night. I said, Boob Newhart. <laughs> Martin Short and Terry Garr here tonight. Now, we have another little excerpt from past shows. This is what we've been doing the last month. And um, Jack Webb, who uh, started on Dragnet. Most people forget that Dragnet was on radio before it was on television. And Jack Webb was the, I guess, the creator of that particular kind of style they did in Dragnet. Rather than conversations, it was the way he thought that normal people talk. You know, it was interruptions and look at each other directly and say, yeah, I didn't know that. And we had him on a sketch one night. Before I talk about it, I want to talk about going to Jack Webb's house. Did you know Jack well? Not well, no. He was a marvelous guy, big jazz fan. And some years ago, it must have been about 15 or 16 years ago, I get a call from Jack Webb because we'd gone to see Buddy Rich. And he says, have you ever met Jimmy Cagney? I said, no, and I idolized Jimmy Cagney. I mean, it was one of those bigger than life stars. And he says, he's coming to the house tonight. Would you like to come out and meet him? I said, I'd love it. And Jack lived at that time in Encino. Went out to his home one night, and he had a big recreation room down, like, in, like in, a, in a basement. And he was an audiophile. And I walked in, and there is Jack Webb and his wife, uh, the late Ralph Bellamy, Harry Morgan, who did the la later episodes of Dragnet, and they're sitting at the bar is Jimmy Cagney. Mm. And I was, I don't get thunderstruck too much by <laughs> people, but when you see Cagney sitting there, and he says, this is Johnny Carson, Cagney says, you know, I don't stay up late, but when I do, you're very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, that's terrific, the way you do it. I said, that's perfect. You sound just like him. I didn't know what to say. It was the best, <laughs> best Cagney impression. Now, Jack Webb was an audiophile. He had a couple of Macintosh speakers that the size of refrigerators and woofers and tweeters and Ampex tape decks. And during the evening, he went and put on the soundtrack from Yankee Doodle Dandy, just the music. And Cagney, if you remember, was a very good dancer. And all of a sudden, he got up and he walked out in the middle of the room and he started singing and dancing to the soundtrack with that kind of, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, and sang the whole, I mean, you, you just sat there transfixed. I've never forgotten that, it was a great evening. Anyway, we asked Jack to come on the show one night and says, would you mind doing a Dragnet sketch with you? I'd never seen Jack, we've done a lot of takeoffs, but I'd never seen him participate in the sketch. So this is from February 19th, 1968. I'm playing a civilian to Jack Webb's Sergeant Joe Friday. 
This is the city. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. Some people rob for pleasure. Some rob because it's there. You never know. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. I was working the day watch on a robbery when I got a call from the Acme School Bell Company. There'd been a robbery. There's been a robbery. <laughs> yes, sir. What was it? How's that? <laughs> what was stolen, sir? I run a school bell company. Never had any trouble before. Can't understand it. Just, just make bells. Never had any trouble. Sir? Hmm? What, what was stolen? My clappers. Your clappers. Yeah, you know those things inside a bell that makes them clang? My, uh, my first guest. Here is one of the uh, most popular actors in films today. He plays Batman again in the sequel, which comes out June 19th. Would you welcome Michael Keaton? Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, know you what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get this out of the way. This is a uh, absolute honor. I am pumped uh. out of my mind to do this, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into it any more than that. But I'm. It's in fact. Hey. That's. I just want to say that. In fact, that's all I want to say. That's all. Well, that's all. <laughs> That would be funny if you just split and we sitting here with an empty chair for a while. I did that one night. When I used to do stand-up one night, I came out and I went totally blank. I mean, like, like somebody just smacked me in the head with a two-by-four. And I came out and said, thank you very much. And you just died? And that was it. Well, I didn't even get a chance to die. I couldn't remember what I was talking about. And I said, thank you very much. Good night. And I walked off and I gathered my... We had Bob Newhart on the show the other night, and we're all good friends of uh, Dick Martin and the late Dan Rowan when they were working together. Uh -huh. And Newhart was telling me in the hall a story. He says, they were working a club once. And I guess it was a bunch of guys, and they got a little been drinking. And Dan and Dick are out there working in, in a hotel, uh, in, in some kind of showroom. And they were dying. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Dan says, ladies and gentlemen, our impression of the 400-meter sprint in the Olympics. And they got into a starting position, and they ran, and they, they ran around the tables. They ran out the door to the elevator and went to their room and never came back. <laughs> True story. Just left. It's one of those great, it's one of those great sadistic, yeah. hysterical things. I think when, when you see somebody die on stage, it's one of the scariest slash funniest things in the world. But don't you, you know? feel as a performer, if somebody else is dying, you, 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 you hurt die. inside? Oh, totally. You I, go right down the tubes. But at the same time, you can't, I get hysterical. You know, I just did this uh, little picture. Come little picture, picture. <laughs> little picture. But I was watching Terry and uh, Danny come out. All right. And I, I had been through the experience once, and it's, it's not your standard kind of you know, actor-oriented movie. Right. And, and here they come out the first day, and I just laughed all the time because they had this look of fear on their eyes. They were dressed, I mean, they were dressed ridiculously to them because they're right. very serious actors, sure. you know, and very talented actors. They didn't have a clue the first yeah. two or three days. And I just would laugh and laugh yeah. and laugh all day long. Did you have as much fun making this Batman picture as you did the other one? Yeah, I had more fun because The stuff, was... the, the hype, they've already started. The, the posters are, I guess the posters are the big thing. You gotta yeah, get the posters. Yeah, 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 they're, you know, and hopefully people won't be too sick of them. I was, they're, they're on buses now. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really shocking to see your face, you know, just your eye alone. <laughs> uh, you know, I was, I, in fact, I was, kind of, there, there was a bus spewing this junk into the air. And it really, it really annoyed me and I was following them. And I, I didn't know they were on the buses yet. So I'm behind this guy and I'm thinking, God. And I'm really mad. He's holding me up, and I'm, I'm smelling stuff. So I pull around, and I was actually going to say, because we talked about this before, I'm a little nuts in trap. I pull around huh. the car, and I said, hey, and I saw my face. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks down at me, looks down at me, and I go, good driving. Good driving. <laughs> <laughs> and nice picture. <laughs> That's funny. I was just, I just flew, uh, flew here to do this. I, was, I wasn't going to miss this for anything. Oh, uh, come on, thanks. No, I was on vacation, and I just, just got on the plane hey, I appreciate and bolted. <laughs> And I know from experience, because I know from people who've told me, I can be a real ugly sleeper. Right. Yeah, I can, I can be real bad. And I could, and I was fighting it. I was fighting it, but I was doing, I started to slip into one of, you know, one of these things that you're fighting. And the next thing you know, it must have been bad, man, because when I got off, people were not walking real close to me. I, I, th I think I went into one of those where I just kind of like went into yeah. sort of... 
you. And you make noises and... Oh, and then you say things that don't have anything to do with... Well, the Dutch in 1877 were responsible. <laughs> you know? And I was drooling, there was drool coming out. Oh. And like, well, well, you're a... And I get those nerve all these jerks. personal things out. You, you ever get those nerve jerks? When you're out of blue, you're sleeping all of a sudden. Yeah. Leg. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep. You say, why'd that move? Why'd that move? I once fell asleep on both arms. You ever fall, you know, fell asleep on one's okay, but I fell asleep once on both <laughs> arms and the phone rang, I swear to God, and I couldn't, I couldn't get my hand on it. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> I'm getting off with my head. Help me! Uh, <laughs> you may have some severe medical problems you're not aware of. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, where'd, you, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? I grew up uh, outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. You're my wife from Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's right. Alex that's right. from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And um, it's a really nice, nice place. Were you good I, in school? No, yeah. no. I, I mean, I wasn't bad. I was never maliciously bad in terms of behavior, but I was always kind of, you know, on the edge. And, and I, I, I was just back visiting my mother and, uh, and uh, my brothers and sisters. And I swear to God, I walked into the, the kitchen and my mother said to me, now, you know, I'm you know, a grown man. And my mother said from the other room, oh, uh, Sister Rosalind called. My spine fused like that. <laughs> You know, I started flinching well, immediately. You went to, I was well, you went to parochial school. I went to parochial school. Oh, and to this you, day? To this day, I'm like this, you know? <laughs> and I still get it. I took my... I had a, a, a teacher's conference the other day with my son, and uh, we're sitting there, and I swear to God, every teacher that I've ever sat with of my sons still look... I still get the same vibe, you know? Like, what if I... Did, did I do something wrong? Yeah. They still talk to me like... I'm still on the other side. Right. When do I flip over? When am I on the adult side? I don't think it's ever going to happen. Did you take acting? What were you good at in school? I was, uh, I was good at goofing off. Goofing off. And um, I was, uh, I was pretty good. In, I was actually pretty good in sports, but I was never. My son astounds me at how, uh, how knowledgeable he is in science. Get to a prank today. Oh yeah. man, I'm telling you. But I mean, he's he really knows an awful lot about science, which knocks me out. I I. I I hope he just keeps keeps on going and going in that direction because I, I don't have a clue. This stuff that's going on right now with the the, the um, satellite, yeah, it's it's as exciting as you get. How much better do you get than that? And a no, few weeks ago, two scientists think they found the, the some atom. evidence of the Big Bang theory that was all supposed to start about 15 billion years ago. Well, they don't know, but that's what they think. It's in the it's in the it got this much space in the paper. Yeah. I don't think you get a bigger story than that, do you? No. The Astro beginning of... Astrology had about two columns, you know. <laughs> that's right. Today is a good day to meet new people. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly and right. The, the biggest discovery yeah. in science got about this next exactly. to the astrology. That's hemlines right. going up. Hmm? You know, hemlines going up. Madonna signed a deal. I swear to God, they had yeah. a thing in the same paper that uh, was something like uh, Elvis stamp debate heats up, you know? Yeah, next to this is <laughs> may have discovered the origin, uh, origin of the universe. Yeah, yeah this was even the panel But that guy going out and getting the satellite. Yeah. I mean, I was watching him. I, was, I think his name was Thomas Akers. It was for one of the guys. And, and uh, I'm watching him. I think, God, this is, this is as heroic and as big. This is the best show you can watch right now. And I'm watching this guy. I mean, that was exciting television. I and said I last thinking, night they should have used Velcro. That's right. That's Velcro is good Velcro for, for, for surgery. Yeah. They should what? just use Velcro for surgery. I always Never felt. thought of that. Well, if you have to open the guy up again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you get back in. You're involved in Little League with the Sun. You mentioned your yeah, son. Yeah, I got a game. I got a game. Are you, you coaching? Yeah, I'm a co-manager. Uh, and we, uh, Is it a I big, just big deal, co-manager? Yeah, it's, uh, I, get, I get a little intense. And, I, and I'm, I actually, I've been calling in and check on scores. And uh, it's, uh, it gets a little insane. Yeah. I, I, I get a little involved. In, so if I seem a little distracted, I'm probably really... Maybe we'll call and we'll check in on the score yeah. later. Right, we're going to take a break. Coming right back. Want to do this first? What? No. Can we? Do we have to go now, or? You can finish. You can finish. Somebody make a decision. No, I just. Yes. Do I have to? Let's go with it. Would no. I, uh... Now you want me to go? Okay, I couldn't. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's all right. Jim. Jim and Peter were working on their job resumes. So. We'll be right back. What's the latest score? Any ball scores yet? 
seven, two, fifth inning. He's getting scores in the Little League game. Give me a break. All right. Here's a very talented <laughs> actor, funny guy, Martin. He'll be starring in two upcoming pictures, Clifford and The Wonder, which will be out in the fall. Would you welcome Martin Short? <laughs> <laughs> and please sit down. Yes. Hello, John. Good to see you, Martin. Good to see you. I am so, you know, I mean, this is cliche. Of course it is. You know, but right. a story of my career. But I would say this, that I'm so touched to be invited tonight. Are you really? Yes, I am. And listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I was not your first choice, I found out. What are you talking about? No, no, it's true. It doesn't really bother me. Uh -huh. Because Frank Stallone is such a different type. And I think... <laughs> and I think... You're secure. See, you're secure. I am secure, yeah. Nice to see you. But it's good to see you. What was the first, when was the first time you were on here? The first time, I was thinking about this today, driving here. The first time I was on was with Betty Davis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truthfully, Betty came out first, and she'd killed. You know, right. she'd done the, the whole, no, 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 no. She'd done the plate bit and yeah. everything. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the plates, how they stay up in the air. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... I couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. And at one point, I, you know, during a commercial break, I was sitting, because I'd never Next met you. Next to Betty Davis. I was, well, I was in between Johnny Carson yeah. and Betty Davis. Oh, and Ed. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know, but really, I was sitting between yeah. Betty. And it was very exciting, especially since Betty was coming on to me throughout the whole commercial oh, break. I, didn't see, I never knew that. Yeah. Usually You're I sit so there. young. <laughs> she digs you. She's yeah. always dug you. How would you be getting a ride home? <laughs> <laughs> Tough to turn her down, a legend. Yeah. Yeah. You can't turn a legend can't a down. Legend. Of course you can. But Kathy you Hepburn can. dug you, too, didn't she? She, th she was very delighted yeah. to meet me. Yeah. Oh, that was... It's true, yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. you ever, hear from these, you ever run into these people you do? Now you do Catherine Hepp, you do all these people. Well, you what know, happens when you run into them? It's flattery, of course. Well, you what know, when I, was, when I was doing SCTV in Toronto, yeah. it was easier because you were in Canada, you know, right. so the only person you would, I mean... Run into a, see a moose occasionally. Yeah. Or Wayne and Schuster, you know, yeah. you'd run into... That was no problem, or Giselle McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jan Rubisch, you that's know, right. but it's not going to be intimidating. David Steinberg, but that's about it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but then you go down to the States, and so, I mean, when I first started going out socially and seeing like I was stunned at who was here. Right. You know, I, I remember go, going to see. Bon, you know, I went to. Uh, I saw Bon Jovi at a, an American Film Institute tribute to Kirk Douglas. Yeah. Well, that was. <laughs> no, I swear to you. Was that, well, he was upset though because uh, he found out that he thought it was a tribute to Kirk Cameron. But the point was. <laughs> but I. But truthfully, I went to the American Film Institute. And I, <laughs> Night of a Hundred Stars Three. Ah. You know, I wasn't around for one or two and. Uh, Doug Henning was there. Now, I had done Doug. Yes. Yeah. The magic of illusion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> magic is illusion, and illusion can be magical. I mean, this is, you know. And so, and I had done him. Doug was kind of magical himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, he's, he's magical. Yeah. He has a yeah. persona. Oh, well, listen, sure. He levitates, for heaven's sake. And so, <laughs> I see. I think the rule of thumb is a guy levitates, there's magic. <laughs> but I, so, so, but I had done him in SCTV, and it was, uh, you know, there was an edge to it. Right. You know, and, uh, but he, ca you know, he came up to me, and that's the drawback, because he came up and said, uh, you know, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My friends are getting me a tape. It's wonderful. And I said, so, so you haven't seen it yet, have you? <laughs> uh, okay, then, so, so bye, Doug. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you meet, then you meet the true mm -hmm. legends. It's like you're talking about Cagney. I, I once uh, did a, a benefit uh, for Rosemary Clooney. I had to sing, actually sing at this benefit. And it was at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, very exciting. And suddenly I was standing there and I felt kind of this beside me. And it, I looked and it was Bob Hope. Now, this, is, this is 1989, Bob Hope. I had never met him. And uh, I, I stood there for a second. I thought, I gotta say something. You know, I can't just let this go. So I finally... Uh, I said, hello, Mr. Hope, I'm, I'm, I'm Martin Short, pleasure. And he said, yeah, yeah, no, I saw, I saw you. 
in that uh, in that film with Nolte. That that was wild. So not only did <laughs> was he talking to me, he actually you know knew something that I had uh, I done. I love the hope thing. Oh. I love the hope thing. <laughs> the hope thing is wonderful. I was so glad he did the hope thing. Yeah. I was worried that the hope thing wouldn't happen. You know, and he did it and pulled it off. But you know, <laughs> but that was part of it. Now we're gonna sing a little later, Mark. No, wait a second. Let me just finish the hope story. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. And uh, the only thing was that at one point, which is totally true, I was standing beside Bob Hope, and and I, I I'm kind of he talks to me, and finally I get so excited, I just turned to uh, 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 Melissa Manchester was there, and I said to her, "Look, it's Bob Hope," and I gave him a low hug like this. Oh. <laughs> I gave him a low uh, kind of. Hug and he kind of stiffened, and uh, <laughs> you know, because you don't. I think the rule of thumb is you don't hug a legend low. That's, That's right. right. That's what you said to me earlier. Right. Put that in your comedy file. Never yeah. do that. Yeah. We have to leave for a second. <laughs> Unless you have a... No, 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 that's okay. it. No, no, I have another hope thing. Have I done my hope thing? Never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right here. We'll be right back. Wow, crazy. Friend. What do you want to do tonight? I mean, you, what's the trip you took to Las Vegas? Somebody told me you had a well, I, strange... Uh, once, uh, once every year and a half or so, uh, Paul Schaefer from the David yes. Letterman Show, an <laughs> old friend of mine from Sunday, you know Paul, uh -huh. and Eugene Levy, yes, uh, and, 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 and Dave Thomas from SCTV, and we go to Las Vegas, and we kind of, we pretend we're the Rat Pack for about a day and a half. That's not <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Paul is Sammy, and, and uh, Eugene is Dean, and... Uh, uh, the last person in the room is Cesar Romero. That's the way it works. It's, Eugene, Dave's, Dave's, it's a Canadian, an old Canadian game. And Deja, but we, we, we saw. The, uh, you actually went, went to shows? Yeah, we went to shows, and, 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 and it's just fun being in Vegas and seeing. Because yeah. there's not an enormous. And I, by the way, you're leaving, and, and, and I, you know, who am I? But I can say this because where are the letters could go? It's not filled with an enormous number of attractive people, Las Vegas, is it? Mm -hmm. well, no, I mean, there's a bit of a weight thing, and that's interesting, you know. The, no. But it's, someone's been there with the ugly stick, I think. And, you know, you some people... I'm kidding! Why did you have me say that joke? No, but people... But, but you go to the shows, and it's fun, and we went and saw Liza. Yeah? We had seen uh, Wayne Newton and Margaret and Liza in a day and a half. Good. That's a lot of stuff. That's a yeah. lot of stuff. And Liza, so it was very exciting. And Liza was killing. You know, she was really, really phenomenal. Really revved up to it. Energy. I went, during New York, New York, her arm flew right off her side. <laughs> Came off of the body. Came off of the body. I you see. know, I, this is all of true. Of course, that's true. As Jack Barr would say. And, uh, it's true, it's true this pal. Is all, this is all. The pal. Uh, w without truth, who am I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, at one point in the middle, she does, as they often do at Vegas, she gets a piece of paper and she says, Oh, this is terrific. Are they really out there? And she's about to introduce us uh, from the, the, the stage. And she says, from SCTV, Dave Thomas and Eugene Levy, they're terrific. And they applaud them. And then they say, and from the David Letterman Show, one of the greatest pianists in the whole wide world, Paul Schaefer. And they applaud him. And then she kind of gets a little solemn and she says, now, meanwhile, I've never met Liza. Yeah. yeah. So she says, uh, there's someone else out there who's helped me through a lot of stuff. And you... <laughs> a lot of rough stuff. So I think to myself, I just had this hunch. And I turned to Paul and I say, you know what? I bet you any money she's talking about George Hamilton. I just thought, you know, they're friends. I thought George Hamilton's there. She said, not only is he... Brilliant, but I think he's real handsome too. <laughs> and, I and I turned to Paul Schaefer and said, Would you describe George Hamilton as brilliant? <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> She said, Mr. Martin Short. And I stood up and I, you know, did that. And then she said, to even confuse me more, pleasure to meet you. No. After helping her all through the rough stuff. Yeah, guy. I said, gee. I, I, and what it was, as it turns out, Paul said, Martin, don't you understand that you helped her through your comedy? She saw you on television. Uh. And then we went backstage and she explained it. And she was very sweet. It yeah. was very, 
touching, but Vegas. <laughs> That's, it's, a, it's a strange place. It is a very strange place. Big cakes. A lot of huge cakes, and most huge of them cakes. have been eaten. Yeah. Nod at. Yeah. Nod at. Yeah. Nod at. yeah. <laughs> women sitting on a. I love the women sitting on a. You know. Uh, you know, huge women what? sitting just like that on a slot, and you see like this, uh -oh. and then. <laughs> And then you go to the next one. You go to the next one. And she says, that's mine too, sir. I, oh, sorry. No, no. That's mine as well, sir. <laughs> you go to the different casino. That's mine as well, sir. <laughs> I've been putting money in there for an hour. That's yeah. Yes. Don't you get And if you get it. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. Wow. Oh. Who, yeah, ouch. Who, me. who have you tried to do you can't do? Oh, impression wise. I did a sketch on Saturday Night Live. I played Lucy. This was the worst sketch you've okay, ever really. seen. Yeah. You played Lucy. I played Lucy. It was the idea of, the premise was, it was just bad. It was called, Look Who's Married Harry. And Lucy was in a new series where she played uh, uh, Bess Truman. Uh, you know, it was bad. And in the middle of it. And you were into it. Yeah. And it was just. <laughs> there was nothing. <laughs> You're talking cricket time. Yeah. And I said to Chris Guest, he was, and I said, oh, you know, how come they don't hit the applause meter? And I saw the applause meter flashing. People just refused. They were like that. <laughs> refused. <laughs> I tried uh, Paul Simon. Uh, it's all gone now. But that's like Jamie that, Farr. Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I mean, there's, it's, uh, and that's Groucho. <laughs> you know, there's, there's uh, Bogart in there. That's, that's a treat. You know, there's... <laughs> Something just hard to get a hold of. Yeah. And, uh... uh no, there's there's yeah. some that you try and you just fail. Yeah. And sometimes I did Paul Anka once on SCTV and got up for one take out of nine. And then that, and then people think you do him, but you don't. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break. We're coming back. Terry Gar's gonna come on. Yeah. <laughs> Terry Gar is here tonight. I like Terry Gar. I like Terry Gar. You, you guys both know Terry, don't you? Yes, yes. She's marvelous right. actors. A lot of fun. Would you welcome Miss Terry Gar? Yes, yes. Yeah. You, you are a real trooper for showing up tonight. I didn't know. I walked in the makeup. I saw you sitting there with this big thing wrapped around your knee? I took the thing off my knee just yeah. because I thought I'd hide this from the audience. But now that you brought it up, oh. I guess I won't be hiding it from the audience. Well, you were limping anyway, and your, your ankle is bandaged, so what, what, well, let's clear this up. What happened to you? I fell down a flight of stairs. Just it, 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 There's no good story about it. I just slipped and fell down a flight of stairs. But I didn't want to miss coming here to say oh. goodbye. Or, or Someone told me you were going to be leaving this show. Is that true? <laughs> no. I, I heard nothing about that. Yes, yeah, Amelia Earhart's missing, too, you know. <laughs> Bring you up to date on the news here. I'm surprised. Yeah, we're gonna pack it in a week from uh, tomorrow night. Oh, honey. Well, come on. Are you on sure now. about this? Yeah, I'm sure about this. All right. But I thank you for coming anyway. Well, I was. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Even though I almost broke my leg. Yeah. You know, I called an ambulance, and, and the guy said, uh, my housekeeper called and said, well, she fell down the stairs. So how old is she? I said, I tell him I don't know. I'm an actress. I don't know how old. I am. <laughs> Why would they ask that? Well, I suppose because they'd have to Because I think you're an 80-year-old person that fell down the stairs. They oh, wouldn't I think see. It would well, be you're me. certainly not an 80-year-old person. The, the agile guest of Johnny yeah. Carson. It's nice to see you. You've nice been with us a lot of times. One time I you know. weren't going to come on the show, though. I remember that. Oh, Johnny, that. I remember very well when I got a bad review. And I remember it was the, the infamous Shirley Wood. I called her up and said, I'm not coming to do the show. You were booked that day. You yeah. called that day, and somebody had been unkind to you, some reviewer. The nerve me. I thought, oh, I'm canceling the Carson show because everyone in the world has read that review. It was this show I did where this this reviewer said, if a brick could sing, it would sound like Terry Gar. I'll kill him. <laughs> Let's go get him, Marty. Yeah. Very, what was his name? Yeah. I don't even remember. Wait a minute, they're laughing at it. It's not funny. You know, he's like saving up that line. No, I, and I, I picked up the phone, I remember, and I called her and I said, look, the only way to get over that is to come on the show and make fun of it and, and have fun with it, right? Yes, and you I was finally agreed you came on and you got out of your system, but you were in a, in a real funk there. Well, you said you had got to come in and, and who are these critics? You went on and on like somebody maybe gave you bad reviews or something, right? Absolutely. I've had some and, and they're painful. Yes, no. Show sure, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I saw Leonard Malton give a uh, review uh, Looking for Love did you, recently. Oh, did you? You had yeah. to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Looking for Love. Looking for Love is a film that Johnny made in 1966 <laughs> with Connie Francis. <laughs> really? Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> and Leonard... <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you know they transferred that film to flammable nitrate stock? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah. But they, it was a cameo role. I played yeah. myself. How, how badly can you get hurt? Lots, lots. <laughs> well, Leonard Malton said, parts of looking for love, I really enjoyed. And other parts, I didn't like at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How many people do you know do Leonard Maltin? I don't know. He does There's not a, not a big call for that, but he does. Let's oh, come on. Oh, you are. You do I any, love all you of you. You do any impressions at all? No. <laughs> what? Well, I only do Michael in, uh, when he goes, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's a good reading. That's a good reading. Let me see. So he does. I'm Batman. <laughs> this he gets a bundle for. I, I used to be married to him. And he gets big what? I used in uh, Mr. Mom. Yeah. You, oh, I of played, course. Uh, I thought. But I didn't know at the time that he was going to turn out to be Batman. I would have yeah. asked him, you know. Well, that was a hit picture. Weren't you in a real turkey, though, called... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, let's bring up all the dirty laundry. No, come on. Weren't you in a thing called Wan Wonton, the dog that saved Hollywood? <laughs> yes, the dog that... <laughs> no. This is, just think of this as... Mr. Think Canadian of this as, show business royalty, I suppose. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Thank you. First of all, why don't you attack him? I didn't say anything. Because we're standing backstage and he says, I have nothing. I have nothing. I haven't got a thing to say. I, I go backstage and he's out 25 minutes. A I killer, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, he's got nothing to say. Well, that's a no, true so comment. I'm just not going to be good tonight. Then you, anyway, yeah. I didn't mean to bring up that wonton taunt, but yes, it, it, I was in that. It wasn't a big fabulous either. movie about oh, a dog a or something. Yeah, but I mean, you know, a person has to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any other bombs? Hey, I'll tell you the thing I did uh, like you in was that uh, the, the your underwear commercial you did. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you you have a very uh, lovely shape and so forth, but. Uh, why did you decide to do an uh, underwear commercial? Because I felt it was important to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't mean to say this it was very, she was on television. It, first of all, they are made in America, they are not made in Japan, they are 100% <laughs> cotton, and I'm very proud to be modeling uh, American underpants. <laughs> That's all I have to say. In other words, if it's been made in Taiwan or something, no, no deal. Absolutely huh? not. Yeah. No way. Now, no. do you wear this product? Yes, I'm wearing it now. Would you like to see them? <laughs> oh, just kidding. Hey, we're married. We you can know, do that. We were married. We I'm going to miss this kind of cheap show. So like, much. You can just do stuff that nobody knows. And well, this is not the McLaughlin Report. What do you want? If you want to go on the McLaughlin, go on the McLaughlin Report. Okay. We're here to have fun. Yes, we, we are. We don't have to get into great deep social issues. How's your personal life? I remember. <laughs> I mean, the, we talk about that, Terry. The last time you were here, you, you, was the relationship wasn't going well or something. Well, you, every time I come on the show, I say, please don't ask me. And you always do. But, well, you know, I feel like I've had a longer re relationship with you than I've had with any other man in my life. Well. Because all the rest of them have fallen by the wayside. And you're, you know, you're always there. You're always here. Yeah. And now, yes. you'll be gone. Be gone. I'll have to go find you. Fly I over well, Malibu or well, something. Well, I make house calls. You do? <laughs> But things are going better now, right? Well, you know, I've had my share of bad relationships. Who hasn't? Uh, lots of us I have. I have. Much, yeah. uh, well, what? Nothing for me. No, I know. But I, I know we have a mutual friend that was Something not... No no no, 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 no. We just... No, we, let's bring it out oh, We know some information. No. We have some information that yeah. we're not going to... Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> let's see. I, I've gone out with uh, some nice guys and some bad guys and some, you know, good-looking guys, some gangsters. Some I didn't gangsters? know. I, by mistake, I, yeah. I didn't find out till later. When did you find out? When I talked to the FBI. <laughs> well, <laughs> right back. Here we are. Okay, before we leave, tomorrow we have Clint Eastwood, David Letterman, and our friend Bob Hope. I really appreciate you coming. Appreciate all of you coming tonight. As one of the characters I have done in my career named Irving Cohen, the legendary songwriter, legendary 90 songwriter. years old, writes 250 songs a day. Give me a C! A bouncy C! <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bouncy C! <laughs> <laughs>
Johnny Carson, you're quite a guy. I stay a stand about oh so high. You've been doing the show for 30 years, and that's a good thing. But now you're going, and that ain't so good. Dot, 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 beep, 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 whatever the hell I'm doing. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Michael. We'll see you tomorrow night. I'm humbled by that applause.